Hello, everyone, and welcome. It is Wednesday, November 24th, and it's time once again for the Knowledge Bolide, sponsored by Topher Spin Meteorites. Today, we're going to be focusing on our collections of home state meteorites. I'm very fortunate. I live in Arizona, and there's a crap ton of meteorites that, that have fallen here and been collected and classified here. So I'm going to show off my collection. I think I have like 24 or 26 total. Not, not going to go into each one of them. Um, and then we're going to do a round robin of, uh, of show and tell for people's meteorites from their home states or a meteorite that's special to them. But before we get into that, I want to make a special announcement. On December 15th, I've alluded to it. I've talked about it a little bit, but I haven't spilled the beans until now. We are having a very special guest spend some time with us. Representing B612 Foundation will be Dr. Edward Liu. Now the foundation, their, their little motto is taking responsibility for our future together. And the goal of B612 is to protect Earth from asteroid impacts. Now you can ask, well, who's Dr. Liu and why should we care? Well, Dr. Liu is not only the executive director of the Asteroid Institute, he's flown three times on the NASA's space shuttle. He's logged over 200 days in space while building the International Space Station. He's a graduate of Cornell and also earned a PhD from Stanford. And he earned NASA's highest award they give, which is the Distinguished Service Medal. So I'm, I'm like, I'm tingling just saying these words. And I'm, I'm not kidding. I, my hairs are standing up right now because I really want to show my appreciation to Scott McGregor, a bolide uh, um, fan and a member of the meteorite community. He uh, hooked us up with uh, Danica Remy, who's the president of the B612 Foundation, and also with Rebecca Shremi, who is the communications, public communications manager. And with my uh, wife, Sue's help, we've been putting together um, this whole presentation. It's going to be fantastic. If you, if you think about uh, in, in a nutshell, what I can say that the, uh, the B612 Foundation does is they map the inner solar system in four dimensions. So they're dealing with time as well as the three axes. So they are looking at all NEOs, near earth objects and projecting where they're going to be and how we need to protect earth from these impacts. So I'm just absolutely blown away that this is happening and uh, super excited for it guys. Um, we're, it's going to be a, a presentation and then a very, very short, uh, his time is extremely limited, uh, question and answer session. So I'll be fielding those questions and then we'll, we'll be able to offer those to the doctor. But uh, super, super excited for that. Hope you guys will join us live. If not live, it'll be the replay that you want to look forward to on, on YouTube. With that, I am done with my announcements and soapboxing, but I mean, come on, a NASA astronaut, 206 days in space, like, geez. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it's, re it's really super cool because we're not playing the, the, we're not playing the, the algorithm game with YouTube. Our, our videos aren't seven minutes long. They're not poppy music and countdown lists and stupid clickbait. We're doing science here. And it's nice to really get recognized like this and have someone with these credentials and this important of a mission uh, want to partner with us. So super excited. I'd like to now go to uh, show and tell of state meteorites. And I have Jeff DeRise all set up. <laughs> Had to pick something with backyard interest, right? So um, <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great, Dofer. Um, the reason I like uh, white court, besides it's in the backyard, so to speak, is it's also associated with a crater. So the crater, the White Court crater, is roughly 11,000 years old, less than 11,000 years old. And uh, the crater diameter is roughly 36 meters across and roughly 6 meters deep. And uh, there's quite a bit of iron 3AB uh, that's being found, shrapnel being found around this crater. Uh, it's been published in Metbull as uh, number 94 back in 2007. And the two pieces that I wanted to share that um, I think 
A, show the shrapnel of, of this particular meteorite, but also um, some of the, the cool features of it. I'll show you here. So this particular piece here is Dang. my pride and joy. So this one is a 946 gram piece of white quart. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was found uh, buried about 14 inches underground, uh, wrapped up in a tree root. So oh, it was cool. hiding way out of sight. So uh, a buddy That's of cool. mine who's a rock hound ended up uh, finding this back in 2020. And then while he was out there finding that piece, a couple weeks later, I couldn't help myself. And this piece here is a nice piece. It's a 526 gram piece of white quart. And what's wow. really neat with it is it clearly shows the, the shrapnel uh, mm -hmm. shape oh, yeah. with the sharp edges and... Uh -huh. Beautiful. So yeah, so those those Man. I have a few pieces of white quart, but but these two are are obviously my my pride and joys. <laughs> Very nice. and they, they definitely should be as well. <laughs> I, these I have the biggest pieces of white quart white quart I've ever seen. Yeah, there's that, there's very few that are pushing that uh, that kilogram mark. That's for sure. Yeah. And these are very nice individuals too, in that they are. Um, they've not been overly clean they really show the natural patina no and and i do have a few smaller pieces that i actually just left the, the clay and the dirt around because it's kind of neat just doing the, the old natural as well but mm -hmm. with these larger specimens yeah i just like to keep them natural i keep them in a in a nice uh desiccant uh, container with uh with the pick desiccant so they're happy <laughs> or as happy as they can be and we call it good so uh, yeah. that is but that yeah. is great. I like that. I really like that shrapnel one. Can we see that one more time, please? You betcha. Yeah, it's, this one's wicked because it's got some really sharp edges. Yeah, if you're not careful, go right through those gloves. <laughs> yeah, it's it is sharp. It, it yeah, is because it'll grab sharp. it. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, it's. I mean, it's probably been uh, the comparisons been made before, probably, but. The, the only meteorite that really jumps to mind as being extremely similar or similar to a point would be Sakota Lynn with its mm -hmm. shrapnel pieces, mm -hmm. but you never get this natural patina on them. No, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Wow. That's, beautiful. that's great. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing that. You betcha. Jeff, I totally appreciate it. I was actually going to ask you to show off your, We'll save it for another time, but I was going to ask you to show off your buzzer coolie this week because ASU um, is their meteorite of the month. They, they Each month they name a meteorite, and this month it's buzzer coolie. And with you being in Canada and us doing your state or your provenance, whatever you want to weirdos call it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so yes, much. Problems. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. worries. Yeah, def definitely the... Uh... The buzzard coolie crossed my mind, but I thought I'd show some white court. <laughs> yeah, and you, you have <laughs> yeah. when I when I, I told Sue, yeah, we can get Jeff to show off his his buzzard. She's like, he just showed that off. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can show it as many times as you want. It's beautiful. Nice. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> All right, thanks. Yep. Yeah. Let's go to the East Coast now with Art Wagner. Art. Oh yes. How are you, yes. buddy? Good. 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 And what I have here is my home state meteorite, uh, courtesy of Stephen Amara, uh, the Barnstable. And this is a 10.15 gram slice. And it was a find in August 18th of 2018. So uh, I know it's, it, it doesn't look like much to look at, but, uh, you know, it isn't. It is an end cut, so you know, I'm I'm kind of glad to have it. And you personally know the finder, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah, Stephen Amara oh, is a a really good friend of mine. Um, we great we, guy. we we crush it at, at Tucson with Pat, um, but he is the at, the actual finder of this meteorite, and I believe it's there's only two meteorites in Massachusetts. Do you know? If that's right, uh, North, North Hampton, uh, and I think uh, Roberto Vargas uh, was able 
to acquire uh, a small fragment of the Northampton. And it was debatable whether it was uh, a meteorite or not. Well, that's, um, that's great. I love Barnesville. It holds a, by the way, it looks really good to you. Nice camera work. <laughs> I, it's, uh, I, I guess <laughs> he's still looking for small uh, fragments that are, are supposedly in the area. Every now and then he has to go out and get that metal detector working. And uh, he just found a piece of uh, a Spanish Regal uh, coin. So, yeah. uh, well, metal yeah. detecting. As, as Pat says, no strewn fields ever hunted out. But uh, yeah, uh, Barnstable must have a lot of fragments there because uh, Stephen Amara has been hunting it for the last two years and getting little pieces each time he goes. So <laughs> eventually it may be hunted out, but that's for his son to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much, Art. I appreciate You're that. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Stephen actually came and stayed with us. Um, and we met him like for the first time in person, kind of right right after he found it. Isn't that correct? Yeah, it, it's kind of it was kind of a funny story. He he found the meteorite and got it published. Uh, and what, before he got it published, people were were basically questioning whether it was real or not because the odds of finding that big of a meteorite in Massachusetts oh. uh, is just you know it's probably an African planted there, but it turned out to be real. He came down to Tucson for the Tucson show and he. I didn't know him basically. He, we, we knew each other from a few posts on Facebook and he's like, Hey, I'm coming down to Tucson. Can you want to get a room together? So I went back and told my wife, well, I guess I'm sleeping in with this guy named uh, Stephen Amara because <laughs> either I'm cheap or lonely or no, but uh, it was a great time. <clears throat> we had a blast and we ended up being, you know, brothers separated at the hip. So it worked out really well. And I'm from Massachusetts too. So I, yeah. I definitely enjoyed his company. But I, I was so glad to find out that the meteorite was real. And I said, you're having this guy come stay with us. And he supposedly found the biggest meteorite in Massachusetts. Yeah. Okay, Topher. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was so excited that it was all totally legit. And that it was just very exciting for him too. Yeah. And I, I actually got uh, the first slice off of it. So. You know, we, we, we should all drop him a note on Facebook that he'd be, that he'd be a welcome guest here to tell the, the Barnstable story. Allison, how are you today? Let me spotlight you. Awesome. Hey, how are you? Good. Hello to everyone from Montana. Hello. Hello. Hello, Montana. Yeah, Montana is not like Arizona. We only have seven in the Met Bowl. I'm sure there's more. They're probably being used as door props or something, though. But um, <laughs> the seven that are in, uh, I have two. I have Roundup, which is an iron. And I don't know a lot about irons. Um, and I have two dot. And two dot is Montana's first and only stony meteorite. It's an wow. H6. It's a shock stage two and a weather stage three. Now, I, I have a question to ask you because you said there's seven from Montana and two dot is the only stony. That's right. What are the other ones? Well, Do you have any idea? Oh, she was ready. She was ready. I do. And for everybody who doesn't know how to do this, let's see if we can get it in here. If you go to the top when you log into the Metbowl and you type in places, put the marker on places and then type a place, it will bring up all your all of those listed in that place. So two dot again is the only stony. We've got iron, 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 and a palisite. Wow. Interesting. That, that is a then, yeah, very interesting um, mix of meteorites. I wonder why only the irons are found. Well, or, probably because they're the only ones that survive. Yeah, yeah it, it's it's not at all unusual in, in states that have very few meteorites for the irons to be uh, very recognizable. And I bet my last dollar that every one of them was found with a plow in a field someplace. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you know, the one that's um, Illinois Gulch, I would bet that that was early mining. Ah, and that, cool. it was found in 1899. And that's a uh, real mining district down there. Cool. Wow. But, yeah. that's, that's why I absolutely love having such a strong um, knowledge bolide crew. Like, I don't know anything about 
Montana meteorites uh, or, you know, where the mining was done. So awesome. Thank you very much, Allison. And for, for bringing in the Met Bull, you get bonus cool points. Hey, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I was blown away by that. That was well done. You saved me some editing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's check in with Jim Shelton if he's ready. The uh, third cabinet on the right is one I just acquired a week or two ago, and I've been refurbishing it. You can see it's got nothing in it, mm -hmm. but uh, I found that one at a flea market. Uh, the, the other two over here on the left, I found at an antique store that was going out of business. Nice. Uh, they're, they're probably 20 or 30 years old. But they look uh, great, though. <laughs> Oh, oh you be that's, that's what we're talking that's about. That's cool. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blown away. <laughs> this one has the best thing trays. ever. <laughs> they come with 18 trays or 15 trays, and they come in different widths. So if you're looking, be sure you get the one you want. But what I'm going to do is lay this on top. Jim gets the points for coolest cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Pat may have the newest, whitest cabinets, but I think Jim's got some extra cool points with that motor. I'm going to lay this down close to the screen and show you my uh, Missouri meteorites. Oh, nice. Cool. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll run this across. First off, I should tell you there are 24 Missouri meteorites, and you're going to see 18 of them. Wow. Wow. And we'll start here. This is uh, Kansas City, believe it or not. Uh, this one, and I'll highlight it with this light. Well, that's not going to work too good. That one was found when they were digging a basement for a hotel in downtown Kansas City. That's that one. Mm -hmm. And then over here to Independence, that's this one. Independence, this one fell about a mile or two from where, we, where I am right now. Wow. And uh, this one... Uh, Sat on a guy's shelf in his kitchen for, well, his whole life, and then he passed away, and his kids finally let somebody cut it up. The next one is Harrisonville. That's this one. This is Fawcett, and this one right there is uh, kind of hard to find. Uh, there's just one stone, and it was small, mm. and a uh, farmer plowed that up in his field, just like, uh, just like Pat said. Oh. Uh, Cape Girardeau, you might have heard of Cape Girardeau. Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's Jim, I, Jim, I only know about Cape Girardeau because I have a client in my real life. I sell computer technology and I have a client, Cape Girardeau um, Surgical Center. And when the meteorite fell, I was like, hey guys, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you have that. Yeah. This one is uh, Conception Junction. Very this nice. Is way up north, uh, Dave Griesling, I think, is was the one that uh, uh, either found it or got a hold of it, purchased it from the farmer. It was found mm -hmm. in a in the side of a bank, uh, a, a dirt bank. Uh, this one, and Conception Junction is one of the most beautiful palace sites, underrated because there's not much of it around, I guess. Uh, this is Little Piney. That's a very difficult one to get. These two are St. Louis, and this is the one that hit the car while it Sweet. was driving down the road. And um, the, the uh, fellow kept it, and he took it with him to the old folks' home. He passed away, and the stone disappeared. <laughs> and people are looking all around the old folks' home thinking maybe somebody just tossed it out in the, in the street or something. But oh, my God. All, all you can get is little crumbs. St. <laughs> wow. Genevieve County. That's down in the southeast part of the uh, state. Archie is a very uh, difficult one to get. This is a uh, uh, one that hit the roof of a building. Hammerstone. Hammerstone. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then we'll wow. move up here. Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. That is Licking, Licking, Missouri. That one was found beside the road in 2015. <laughs> And this one is uh, Milton, Missouri, uh, Billings, Missouri. That one's also in the south. And I have a comment about that. I'll get to it in a minute. Uh, Lanton. And here's two pieces of Seymour, Missouri. 
And then this will be the last tray of Missouri. We have Baxter. And this is a very difficult one to get. You can hardly see it in that frame. It's Mincy. And wow. mm. uh, let's see, that is, uh, that's a very thick slice of Mincy. Warrington what is the classification on that? Is that a mesosiderite? That is a... The one, in the, the, the one in the white frame right there I'm talking. Yeah, that, that's a mesosiderite. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Uh, a home state necessarily. This this one ended up in a library in the city of Warrington, and the library was moved, and nobody knows where the stone is anymore. Oh man! And then these next two are not meteorites, but these are from a meteorite crater, which uh, hit in Missouri, and the glacier eroded it, and they're really having trouble uh, classifying it as a crater. Uh, it does have some shocked quartz, and here are some. Uh, magnetic particles that were picked up nearby. Oh, cool. Here's a list of the ones I don't have. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Shameless plug. I love it. <laughs> okay, I wanted to show you one more thing. If there's anyone out there who has a sample of any of these meteorites, please comment in the YouTube video and I will hook you up. Oh, super, super. Oh, nice. A meteorite books. Mm -hmm. and there are meteorite books. That's my overflow. These, these are first case. These are all meteorite books. Wow. Nice. Buckwald, Asteroids yeah. 3, Cosmochemistry. Got some nice ones in there. Yeah, I got my best on the top shelf. They're top shelf books. H.H. Neininger's Papers. That's a hard one to find. From here to here, those are all nine in your books. Nice. All of these wow. right here. Well, wow. thank you for your time. You, you have quite a man cave going on down there. <laughs> <laughs> that is some serious scientific man cave nerdery going on, and I love it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you definitely have my stamp of approval on those cases, man. Wow. All right, let's check in with Mike Kelly and see what he's got going on for us. Hey, how's everybody doing? So I live up in Pennsylvania, so I got a, got a couple of the PA ones to, uh, to show you today. Being a subtype collector, uh, really haven't focused on the state. So this is Shrewsbury. Uh, and the main reason I got that was I needed the subtype uh, within the uh, 1ABs. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is SLL, so that means it's got low gold content and low nickel content as the grouping, and it's just little fragments. Uh, there's really not much of that meteorite to go around. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, that was what kind of got me started on having at least a pe one Pennsylvania one. And once I got started doing that, I had to have a second Pennsylvania one. So <laughs> picked up uh, Mountain Joy. Um, oh. So this has a, uh, a Reverend Steve McLean. Um, number to it, so it came out of the Stephen McLean collection, which is kind of cool to have that type of documentation with it. And again, it's really small. Mount Joy is actually a rather large, high uh, high kilogram meteorite. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, it's another one. Uh, the PAs you don't find them mm -hmm. out there too much. There aren't too many pieces out there. Uh, so it is a uh, it is a joy to have both of those in my collection. <laughs> Pun nice. intended. And Shrewsbury is actually uh, uh, one of thirty five, so it's actually a relatively rare subtype yeah. as far as the SLLs go. Um, and the other thing I had to show for show and tell uh, was I know Topher, we had talked on one of the very early presentations about the moon trees. Oh, yes. So uh, uh, I had this sitting around and finally got around to casing it up. So I figured I'd show it off. Uh, this is from uh, stuff collected around the bottom of the moon tree over in Coal Creek Park over in Pennsylvania. Uh, so PA has five moon trees on the record books. Uh, oh, nice. I think the one in Philadelphia is a really odd story because it died uh, and they knew it was dying. So they cloned it before it died <laughs> and replant, replanted its clone. Wow. Um, and then I guess, uh, I guess uh, I think it uh, ended up dying again, but I think uh, they redid the process and moved it somewhere else. So hmm. I need to go hunt that one down and <laughs> it's a rather interesting uh, tree story. Um, that is a really yeah, nice. It is. Uh, it's a, uh, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, that's a really nice display. 
put it's, together yeah, really it's, it's well. A, it's a sycamore, so um, I do have some seeds from there. So uh, maybe in the springtime, one of those will be coming out of there, and I'll see if I can't uh, put one in my backyard. Wow. That would be so cool, man. And yeah. for, those, for those that don't know, the, the seas were actually flown into space because one of the, uh, one of the astronauts was a uh, botanist. A, uh, it was a, a four, no, he was a, uh, a four. He was a, his, he was he was a, a smoke jumper. jumper. Yeah, he yeah was a smoke that's what he was, a forest for, fire uh, uh, smoke jumper. Yeah, so uh, that's, uh, that's in the little uh, wording I have on there. Yeah, uh, it was, uh, he was the command module pilot, uh, Stuart Rusa. Uh, and he That's... went up with those seeds on uh, Apollo 14, 1971. There was 500 seeds total. They germinated them all and actually had a very good germination rate uh, and then placed them all over the country. So. Wow. Yeah, I, I was fortunate enough to see one down in, in uh, Tucson. Hey, we have Gregory in Florida. Hey, buddy. How are you, man? Good to have you. Good, good. <laughs> There, there's one, um, there's only five meteorites that have ever been found in Florida. In the Springs, Lake Okeechobee, Eustis, Great Beach, and Osceola National Forest. Uh, the Osceola was a fall. And uh, I have the Bonita Springs. Actually, I don't live too far from Bonita Springs. And uh, it's only a couple of hour drive away for me. But here it is. It's an H... Um, H5 ordinary chondrite 2.7 grams and uh, so it's nothing much to really uh, you know look at but considering Florida you know is um, very fossiliferous there's a lot of ice age mammals down here which I also collect but as far as meteorites it's very uh, it's always wet and rainy and, and very humid these things will deteriorate a lot of metal early. in there mm -hmm. Huh? A lot of metal in there? Yeah, there, there's some metal in it. It's an H5. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the metal. Yeah. There. yeah. You see it flashing. Nice and yeah, thick flights. Yeah. It's uh, 21 millimeter by 16 by 3. So that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that's all I have. Well, hey, Gregory, on that card, does it mention the total known weight of this meteorite? Yeah, it's 41.8 kilograms. Okay. So okay. just under 100 pounds, I guess. Awesome. So it's a little bit of it around, yeah. Well, good. Right, hi, 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 Greg. I'm glad you could join us. Yeah, I've been this? getting to know Greg a little bit over email, so I'm glad you uh, oh, so, decided yeah. to come join the Hangout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is really interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll start attending these every Wednesday. And we do them yeah, every I Wednesday. Told you, I told you you'd be hooked. These, these guys are, <laughs> uh, yeah, they are diehard cool. meteorite dudes. <laughs> yeah. And girls. Right. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is our 79th in a row, actually. Oh, jeez. So. Yeah, I thought we were approaching close to eighty. Wow. <laughs> yeah, this is our 79th in a row, and we try to we try to do a lot of show and tell and just uh, joking around. A lot more joking around in the in the post show where it's not recorded, but we try to offer a lot of education as we go, and that's why I'm going to shoot it over to Mike Kelly to try to explain brecchias and brecciation to us. If you don't mind, I'll get your slideshow going. Yeah, sure, certainly. So uh, the one on the left is a uh, piece of the moon, so lunar breccia, so that's NWA 5000. Uh, and one of the interesting things about breccias is sometimes uh, there are breccias within breccias, uh, and this is definitely an example of that. Uh, if you look at some of the clasts over time, you know, with multiple bombardments going on on the lunar surface, the, the rocks will get reworked uh, and chunks of breccia will get broken up and then reformed into other newer breccias. Um, and again, you can see that the, the class in there are, are pretty angular. The picture on the right is a Howardite, which is uh, uh, one of the breccias from Fort Vesta. Uh, and you can see I, I chose this one just because you can see it's got a couple of different sized and different colored uh, class in there. And you can see that they're pretty angular bits in a very fine grained matrix. And they, they stand out as dark class in a, in a lighter uh, ground mass. And that's that's the Howardite. Mm. Yes. So there's, there, was, uh, there was the moon and four Vesta. Here's another lunar. Uh, 11474 is kind of interesting because these class, if you look at the edges, are a little more rounded than the other classes. Um, and as I was mentioning, the, the theory is uh, with the matrix being more of a meltish matrix, uh, the, the heat 
kind of uh, also attacks the class and, and melts them uh, a little bit around the edges. So you'll get a little bit of smoothing. Um, so you'll get rounded class sometimes in meteorites, but much more often you'll get a lot of uh, very angular coarse edged class. And the, uh, the picture over on the right, uh, I obviously, I need an upgrade, but there's a Mars polymic breccia. Uh, so those are the, the black beauty breccias. Mm -hmm. um, and again, there's something like 17 different uh, lithologies or something like that inside uh, some of those polymic breccias from, from Mars. That was one of the great things about the black beauty sample was it gave us 17 Mars samples delivered in one stone. Yeah, yeah, it's crazily diverse material. Um, we talked about 869 a little bit. That's kind of interesting because it's one of the few chondrites uh, that is mentioned as being a breccia. Uh, my piece doesn't show the best uh, brecciation to it. Down towards kind of the bottom at 6 o'clock, you can see it does have uh, a bit of a class sticking in there. Yep, right there. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's, that's kind of interesting because uh, bits of that me meteorite have... Um, uh, solar grains, uh, you know, cosmic uh, ray uh, impregnation in it, and that's how they can kind of tell that it was at the very surface of uh, the parent body. Um, over to the right of that is uh, one of the uh, Rumorudi type uh, ordinary chondrites, uh, and you can see up on the, the top towards the 12 o'clock, it's got some nice big chunks of uh, brecciated material uh, right. sitting in there. It just stand out real nicely visually against the rest of the material. Yeah, that I'm starting to really appreciate the beauty of Rumorudi. Yeah, they get uh, they, a lot of them are brecciated, um, yeah, and uh, to a degree that they are very, uh, very, very beautiful. Yeah, this one's nice. Yep. Uh, so uh, on the left is a uh, a polymic diagenite. So again, that polymic means is made of many different types of uh, of rock class. The ground mass is not necessarily the same as the class inside of it, and one class sitting next to another may not be the same lithology. Um, uh, and again, that's just, uh, it's another piece of, uh, of four Vesta that shows brecciation to it. And what was throwing me off is this actually looks lunar to me. It's, it's yes, very, it's a lunar very lunar looking. lunarish looking meteorite. Yeah. And I think this might be the last of the meteorites I have on the slides, but, uh, this is just another, uh, Rumorudi. And again, yeah, like Topher said, I, I, I really like the visual look on the Rumorudis and it's got that large, very angular class down in the bottom right corner. Uh, that you can see that doesn't really have many chondrules or anything in it. It's just a big, big class of uh, lighter material and a very dark matrix. Yeah, this one, this one's nice. This, this big one has really angular. And then you also see a lot of like, is this melt going on in here? Do you think? I have a feeling it is. Yeah, it's, it's probably got a bunch of bigger dark uh, melt patches in there. Because it, it looks like it's you know melt kind down of flows in here. through there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like I said, you can get lost in some rumor Rudy's, man. They're, they're beautiful. <laughs> um, you added the, you added the Alamo um, terrestrial breccia as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to, to throw in there uh, a terrestrial breccia. And I see you, you popped another one there, which is not a nice meteorite there. Uh, but yeah, you can see with the uh, terrestrial breccias, you do get a lot of those round, very, very rounded uh, class going on there. So if you look at that class at the top, it's a lot more rounded than anything you saw uh, in the meteorites. Uh, which would probably be described in, on, on the more severe rounded cases in the meteorite ones as being um, uh, sub-rounded, so almost round, uh, but not nearly as much as something like the Alamo Breccia, which is terrestrial. Mm -hmm. And then you got a you got a nice Los uh, Venatos uh, 262 there. Yes, yeah, this one I absolutely love. This is this is my go-to picture of when I when I when I show a little bit of brecciation. Yeah, I, I like that one. Some really, really nice pictures of uh, end um, descriptions of breccias and, and how to tell a terrestrial breccia from a extraterrestrial breccia, which yeah. is kind of important. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Mike. I really appreciate your help doing that, man. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I think I just came to, to you with that yesterday. <laughs> and I, I know a lot of people in the group are way more advanced and you guys know what these terms are, but... We have a lot of people on YouTube yeah. watching that no you know, are just getting started. So kind of want to still, you know, uh, approach all the levels and answer the, you know, glossary definition, you know, kind of questions like that. And you did it perfectly. So thank you. Awesome. Sure. There's always Thanks. fun stuff to learn about them. Well, since today we're showing off our home state meteorites, I busted out my new Concord 
meteorite at 2.24 grams. Nice. And New Concord is in Ohio? Yes. Yes. Yes, Ohio only has 12 official meteorites, and only four of them are stonies, and the rest are all irons. Mm -hmm. And one of them is a doubtful iron. I don't know the story on that. Mm. And then there is one impact structure. So we do have an impact crater. Nice. And your cap, your counter always looks like breccia to me. <laughs> and I also how, wanted... How, I'm sorry, Marissa, how old is New Concord? Um, it's, it know? fell in 1860. Yeah. I believe May 1st. Ooh, bonus. Thank you. <laughs> and I wanted to show that I received uh, this book... With the meteorites, it's, I believe a friend just threw it together. Um, it's a bunch of information about the meteorite. So it's got all kinds of articles since it was a fall and people witnessed it. So um, I was very grateful that somebody included all of that kind of information for me. Very cool to have all that documentation. And then the yeah. last thing I wanted to show was some breccia from that impact structure. Oh. It's called Serpent's Mound. Oh, yes. Wow. <laughs> Very famous. It's, it's about four hours away from where I am. It's in southern Ohio. And the crater is about a little less than 320 million years old. And it's it's pretty old, it's pretty eroded, but uh, it's still there. And some people can go to a high point and still see the crater rim. And the hmm. crater was estimated at about eight kilometers wide to maybe 14 kilometers. Wow. I actually went down and collected this sample. Excellent. Stellar. That, that, cool. that adds to the cool factor of it as well. <clears throat> hey, Marissa, have you seen the inside of that? What that stuff looks like? Um, I have actually. I've got uh, a slice that a friend gave me, so I have. I do have a uh, cut open slice of it. Okay, I was going to say, if not, let me know because I I could cut you one. <laughs> oh, fantastic! Nice. I yeah. I might hit you up on that sometime. <laughs> okay. See, it, it pays to know people and be part of the crew. <laughs> That's cool. awesome. Thank you, Marissa, for checking in from Ohio with New Concord. Uh, we have Roberto Vargas in the building. Hey, bud. Hey, How's it the, going? The ghost so, uh, of Roberto is in the building. <laughs> so I'm actually um, in Florida visiting family for Thanksgiving. Uh, but I did. I, I wanted to show off um, my home state meteorite. So my home state meteorite is. So my home state is actually Connecticut. Um, Connecticut has five witness falls and no finds. All of Connecticut's meteorites are stony meteorites. Four of them are L-type meteorites, uh, and then one of them is an H-type meteorite. Only one is really available. And that's the first one. So Weston fell in eight, December 14th, 1807. It was the first witness fall in the U.S. That's that is my cool. piece. Ooh, oh, nice. well, nice. so, it came, so it came from the, the Center for Meteorite Studies from Arizona State University. Wow. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch it up and see if I can get you a close-up of it. Look oh, at that. Nice. Yeah. Number. So that's, it's actually got a Ninninger number on it. It is listed in his book. That's the page in, um, in Ninninger's <laughs> book with my specimen number, with my, my meteorite specimen number in it and its original weight. Nice. Um, wow. Damn yeah. nice. <laughs> That is so, amazing. So yeah, so that's that's actually like one of probably one of my favorite meteorites of all time, just because it you know it's my home state meteorite, the first it's one got, of the United States witnessed. 
Yep, and it, and it's got great provenance. Wow. Um, yeah. I don't know if that picture is going to come through, but it basically shows the years, the all the falls. So they were all falls, the different years that they all fell. Interesting fact, they're all falls. All the meteorites that have fallen in Connecticut, four out of the five have fallen in towns that start with the letter W. <laughs> so two... Uh, fell in the same town, eleven miles apart. Wow. Yeah. So, so, and then there's so there's Weston, Weathersfield, Weathersfield. Um, there's Waterford, and then Stratford. The Weston is kind of the only one that's actually readily available. Yeah. So you, you need to uh, move to a town that starts with a W. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not that's catching great. anything in the in, in the in the in the capital city. So. Mm. Man. Well, I'm really glad you checked in on your vacation. I hope all your family's well and a happy Thanksgiving to you, buddy. Thank happy. you. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving, bro. I have uh, a tough job as a Arizona collector because there are so many Arizona meteorites. <laughs> um, oh, and that I, 178. <laughs> yeah, I don't even try to pretend that I know how many there are and what classifications. But this is my box of Arizona meteorites. I think there's like 24 of them in here. There's a few that I'll, that I'll highlight. They're all in alphabetical order. Cat Mountain is a kind of a, a nice one, hard to mm. get. None of these were found by me, but there's Grapevine Mesa, the brand new Ben Cubinite. Oh. Not even pub, what's well, provisional. Mm. And I, I have uh, Coconino uh, Sandstone and uh, Meteor Crater Rim Impact. Nice. Um, nice. Thank you, John Humphreys, for nothing. He gave me <laughs> nothing. <laughs> um, so we'll start at the top again. Let me see here. Gold Basin and Old Camp. Hacienda. Holbrook and Sacramento Wash. Another Sacramento Wash and Indian Butte, different different Sacramento Wash numbers, the 05 and 03. There's Scottsdale, a single stone fall. I also have a slice of Scottsdale and a slice of Chandler, which is a single stone fall. Up here is uh, Tank Mountain, Trilby Wash. Right. Whetstone is another really nice one. You can see the metal in that puppy. There's Wickenburg. And that's it. But those are my, these are my Arizona subgram or thereabout collection. Wow. Yeah. The lighting is killing me, but you guys get the hint. This one is Chandler. Nice. It's nice size slice. Yeah. It's, and it's an end cut. Oh, cool. There's only about three people or four people that have a piece of this. And be, I couldn't be a meteorite dealer who lives in Chandler without owning a piece of Chandler. So ah, absolutely. I'm super, super happy. And I know the provenance. What's really nice about this one is you can say, wow, I, I wonder who found it. Well, you know who found it? Dr. Lawrence Garvey at ASU. He was out walking his dog on the, on the outskirts of a cotton field and was kicking rocks. And he's like, holy crap, I just kicked a meteorite. And he picked it up and... <laughs> That's Chandler. Yeah. Um, there's also Scottsdale, like I said. That's another single stone fall. And it's a really, really beautiful stone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the whole thing I tell people never to do. Show it to the web, can't put your hand behind it. Uh, but that's, that's a beautiful stone as well. And I, I have the, uh, the provenance from the finder as well. So those are my Arizona meteorites that I can talk about. <laughs> That was a really fun topic to see and hear a little bit about everyone's state meteorites and their view of, of meteorites from their states. How, you know, what it, it tells you a lot about the, the home state where you're from as well, what, the, what kind of agriculture is like and mining. And so very interesting. We have a, our weekly segment of our viewer questions. So if you guys have questions when you're watching these videos on YouTube, drop them into the chat. Um, and we'll have a constructive conversation about it. We go to our resident professor, Professor Pat. 
with the week's <laughs> question. What you got for us, buddy? Well, not a real professor. <laughs> I don't even play one on YouTube. So we had we had a couple of questions uh, this time uh, about uh, desirability of meteorites by uh, petrographic type for the ordinary chondrites and by weathering grade and. Uh, I tried to look at this from a couple of different standpoints. Of course, you know, there's there's a scientific answer, um, but there's also a, a straight up collector uh, sort of answer. So in in general for collectibles, and I've collected coins and stamps and a bunch of other stuff, uh, but the, the, the value or desirability is really based on scarcity and on condition. So, you know, in, in general, the meteorites that are more highly prized are the ones that are of relatively rare subtypes. So, you know, we talked about type three, four, five, six, and seven for ordinary chondrites, and that, you know, the type threes amount to all of 6% of the, uh, of the total number of named meteorites. Um, whereas when you get up to the, to the uh, type sixes, you know, we're talking more like, 30 at 7, 38 percent of the meteorite. So in general, the lower types um, have the scarcity factor as well, as well as, you know, the from the aesthetic or, well, from the purely aesthetic angle, the ordinary chondrites that show really nice chondrules tend to be more desirable. Um, and, and the ones that are more metamorphosed tend to be somewhat less desirable. However, there are some exceptions to that. The uh, some of the type six meteorites, especially L6s, tend to show a really quite beautiful crust uh, and, and, and a very smooth, even crust that, that you don't tend to get on the lower petrological types. So really in general, um, you know, there could be there could be many answers and there's there's room for for many different styles of collecting or or um, interests in collecting. But um, you know, in general, scarcity um, and and condition tend to be important. So the other part of that question was, what about weathering grade? And weathering is really, you know, about terrestrial weathering, how long they spend on Earth and, and whether they're in a wet environment or a dry environment. Uh, and, you know, in general, ones that are less weathered are more desirable. However, there are many exceptions. And one of those we illustrated well today, if it's from your home state, from your hometown, uh, found by one of your friends, uh, those sort of things override that as well. So there's uh, there's a wonderful diversity of answers and a wonderful diversity of ways of collecting. So I hope that answers the question. It does. Thank you very much. And I agree with you 100%. It's, yeah, it's about science and it's about beauty. But as you saw, some of the pieces that we showed off today you're not going to build a collection around them. <laughs> They're not the center <laughs> stage of your collection, you know, um, but it is the story behind it. And it's the, the, where the meteorite fell and the whole, the people's involvement, the things went missing for years. They were found later. All that intrigue just adds real coolness to it. But Topher, uh, you only care, you only care about the story, but it is actually a meteorite, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I get so many people contacting me with their stories. And I don't care about the story of your rock. <laughs> yeah. If I had a nickel for every time I heard the story about, I went out this morning and this was laying in the middle of my lawn and it wasn't there before therefore it had to fall from the sky <laughs> i want you to tell me it's a meteorite <laughs> well, uh, i have two announcements that i'd like to make the topic for next week is urolites urolites and i have a new one in the mail so hopefully it'll be here by then so urolites is a topic for next week and i want to do a little shout out to jules mitchell uh, a crew member, I was hoping she'd be here tonight. You saved my butt this week. You know what you did. Thank you very much. You're a hero. Um, with that, I think that the only thing we need to do is vote on the topic for the December 8th show. So there is a uh, Facebook group with the Knowledge Bolide that you can vote on that. Right now, it's Pretty Palisites. My wife chose that name. So please vote for what you want so I don't have to have a show called Pretty Palisites. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs>
<laughs> with that, I want to thank everyone for your participation today. It was a great event. We went through it speed fast. It's Thanksgiving. Let's get to some turkey, guys. See ya. Yeah. Bye, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye -bye. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. <laughs>